From livestock now to crops, we come to Garfield County where farmers say it's been a rough summer as you can imagine, but they're also cautiously optimistic heading into fall planting. We begin with Curtis Mack of Drummond on the day he's turning 40. And fortunately, there's really no reason to celebrate the early milo he planted in April. In fact, there's little hope for the crop if it doesn't rain soon. And as for his soybeans, simply put, they're hit and miss. We got about six tenths of rain right there after we got done cutting the wheat or towards the end of wheat harvest. And we went in and we planted those 380s. Uh, matter of fact, we had to wait a few days even uh, to get in the field to plant them, which was good. And uh, now the beans haven't had a rain on them since we planted them. In your time of farming, have you ever seen it this hot and this dry at the same time? You know, I guess I probably haven't. Uh, there's some, you know, like my dad, he's 74. He, he probably has seen it this hot and dry before. It, it has affected us. Uh, severely this summer. Uh, we've done everything we can do now until we get a rain. Uh, we've got to have a rain before we can go any further on them. We probably will wait if we don't get a rain until the latter part of September before we try sowing anything. Um, that will also affect our canola sowing. Um, you know, canola needs good soil moisture contact to germinate. So we really need that moisture in the soil, a moisture rich soil to plant that and get it started. After it's started, it's pretty drought hardy, but that initial start on it is very, very critical. A similar story from Ed Regeer, who also farms in Garfield County. You heard your dad talk about the droughts of... 50s, he talked about the 50s a lot. But back then they didn't grow summer crops, they just grew wheat. And they had trouble growing wheat in the 50s because it's so dry. And that's, uh, I just have a concern that we're rolling back into that kind of a weather pattern where it's going to stay dry for some, several years. This has been uh, the driest that I can remember. 1980 was really bad, but we started out wet. This started out dry in June and it's been dry ever since. And obviously you're looking at your corn here, just nothing good you can say about it, is no, it? No, it's just, it just was too dry. It, uh, you know, some years we can get, we can have Iowa type weather. We can grow anything. And then this year was like Phoenix, Arizona, you know, just too dry, just too dry. Just sort of became a desert out yeah, here with yeah, the high temperatures? Yeah, we, you know, it was like a desert, 110 for days on end and you can't grow anything. And when, when's the last time it rained? Do you remember? I don't even remember. <laughs> Which is sad. It, I mean... was, it was back in June, I think. We had a, we had a pretty good rain in June, but uh, it quit. And uh, it's just been so dry. What kind of concerns do you have for the next month to six weeks? I just hope we get some rain so we can plant. Because we're, you know, we have no subsoil moisture. Even in your no-till yes, fields? Yes, it's gone. Like there's nothing probably for four foot down out here in this field. There's nothing. Are you kind of having to reevaluate what your priorities oh, yeah. are with your input cost? Yeah, we're going to go into a pull your horns in type mode where you're not going to, that's you know, the bottom line. You got to make money. Meanwhile, in cotton country, southwest Oklahoma, it's the driest it's been in years. Well, the, the dry land crop has unfortunately just absolutely melted down on us. These fields have been, essentially came into bloom at about five nodes above white flower, which uh, by any reasonable definition, that's essentially cut out at first bloom, which means we had no uh, significant amount of yield potential on most of the dry land fields that we're surveying. Extension cropping specialists also say it's been a really tough year. The excessive heat is in provide us a double whammy on top of the lack of rainfall and cause all our summer crops to in general fail in a lot of places. As, as far as some of the irrigated crops, you know, we think that, that they should be looking fine because they've had as, as much water as, as they need. Uh, however, the heat has just been, you know, tremendous the last 30 days. And a lot of those crops, whether it be peanuts or corn or cotton, have, have been going into reproductive stages and, and typically no, Nothing going into reproductive stages when it's 110 on a daily basis is good. And as for weeds in the drought? For a herbicide to be effective, the plants need to be actively growing to take that herbicide in. 
So if a weed is, is stressed because of the drought, it, it's probably got a very thick wax layer on the leaf or it's just kind of shut down for the year. So herbicides will not be very effective. So to, to overcome that, you either need to increase the rate, um, use a surfactant, and in some cases, just wait until you get a little bit of rain to get that plant growing again. The bottom line, Oklahoma producers will keep at it as long as possible and keep a mean eye on the skies in a desperate hope for decent rains. They're perpetual optimists. You know, sooner or later it will rain. And, you know, sooner or later it will. It, it'll cool down this fall and we'll give it another go. Um, I think one thing that this kind of reminds us is to, you know, provide or to at least work with caution in our cropping systems here. Because uh, a year like this, um, this is not the... It's, it's an extreme year, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities in Oklahoma. And finally, as you're kind of looking forward to the next few months and, and looking ahead, what is your approach as far as managing the overall operation? I mean, our ground right now is prepped to the point that if we would get a rain, we could go in, cultivate it, and we could, we could yeah. sow. So. What we're just waiting on right now is, is a rain, and, and we're going to use that uh, conservation method, and we're not going to work the ground anymore right now. To, the more you work the ground sometimes, the more moisture you, you lose, obviously. So we're holding back and trying to conserve what we have. You know, I like to plant corn. If we had normal temperature, normal precipitation, it'd be wall-to-wall -wall corn, you know, every spring. But uh, we don't see that. We're not Iowa. We're Oklahoma, and so you got to make adjustments. 